Welcome to Living Life. I often get this question from our members here at church. Uh, they ask me that as a pastor, if there's something that I do on Sundays to get ready for Sunday worship, uh, is there some kind of ritual or pattern or routine uh, that I go through uh, before coming here on Sunday mornings? Uh, the assumption is that pastors, we must do something different, right? Uh, coming to church on Sundays and standing in front of the pulpit. Uh, I actually want to turn that question on to you guys today. Is there something that you do that's different on Sunday mornings? Uh, something that's very different from the normal things that you would do on the way to work? And if there is, you know, what's the motivation behind it? What's the reasoning behind these differences? You know, today we're continuing our look at the book of Exodus chapter 29. And here we're looking at very specific instructions that God had for his priests. You know, everything, all of these things were necessary not only to perform uh, the duties and tasks as priests, uh, but also they were necessary just to enter inside the building. Can you imagine that? Uh, so as we prepare ourselves for this time of worship, uh, let's all read today's passage together. Exodus chapter 29, verses 10 through 37. Bring the bull to the front of the tent of meeting, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it in the Lord's presence at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Take some of the bull's blood and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger and pour out the rest of it at the base of the altar. Then take all the fat on the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver, and both kidneys with the fat on them and burn them on the altar. But burn the bull's flesh and its hide and its intestines outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Take one of the rams, and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it, and take the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar. Cut the ram into pieces and wash the internal organs and the legs, putting them with the head and the other pieces. Then burn the entire ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord, a pleasing aroma, a food offering presented to the Lord. Take the other ram, and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it, take some of its blood, and put it on the lobes of the right ears of Aaron and his sons, on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. Then splash blood against the sides of the altar. And take some blood from the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and their garments. Then he and his sons and their garments will be consecrated. Take from this ram the fat, the fat tail, the fat on the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver, both kidneys with the fat on them, and the right thigh. This is the ram for the ordination. From the basket of bread made without yeast, which is before the Lord, take one round loaf, one thick loaf with olive oil mixed in, and one thin loaf. Put all these in the hands of Aaron and his sons and have them wave them before the Lord as a wave offering. Then take them from their hands and burn them on the altar along with the burnt offering for a pleasing aroma to the Lord, a food offering presented to the Lord. After you take the breast of the ram for Aaron's ordination, wave it before the Lord as a wave offering and it will be your share. Consecrate those parts of the ordination ram that belonged to Aaron and his sons, the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. This is always to be the perpetual share from the Israelites for Aaron and his sons. It is the contribution the Israelites are to make to the Lord from their fellowship offerings. Aaron's sacred garments will belong to his descendants so that they can be anointed and ordained in them. The son who succeeds him as priest and comes to the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place is to wear them seven days. Take the ram for the ordination and cook the meat in a sacred place. At the entrance to the tent of meeting, Aaron and his sons are to eat the meat of the ram and the bread that is in the basket. They are to eat these offerings by which atonement was made for their ordination and consecration. 
but no one else may eat them because they are sacred. And if any of the meat of the ordination ram or any bread is left over till morning, burn it up. It must not be eaten because it is sacred. Do for Aaron and his sons everything I have commanded you, taking seven days to ordain them. Sacrifice a bull each day as a sin offering to make atonement. Purify the altar by making atonement for it and anoint it to consecrate it. For seven days, make atonement for the altar and consecrate it. Then the altar will be most holy and whatever touches it will be holy. In today's passage, God provides instructions uh, for his priests to consecrate themselves so that they may serve him and perform their duties as priests. You know, consecration has many nuances, but basically it was a way to purify them uh, so they could come into the presence of God and be able to perform everything that they needed to do. And I'm sure many of you, when you guys were reading today's passage, it was actually kind of difficult to follow along. You know, there are lots of instructions here today, especially on sacrifices. Uh, there's things about slaughtering animals, different types of animals. There's things that you do with the blood. You know, sometimes you pour it out. Sometimes you sprinkle it. You know, sometimes you dab it on different parts of the body. You know, different areas of the tent of meeting are mentioned. There's a lot going on in today's passage. And all of this is meant to go on for seven days. You know, not only is it confusing, you may ask yourself, you know, what does this have to do with me today or my worship of God? You know, I'm not a high priest of God. I'm not worshiping out in the wilderness. I don't have a tent of meeting or a tabernacle, uh, nor do we practice these rituals anymore, right? Uh, it would be strange if every time I entered my church in New Jersey, I had to do what they did. Like I had to strip my clothes and wear different garments and have blood on me. And, you know, there'd be a lot of weird things if I had to actually do all of that. And I had to douse myself in like oil. I had to anoint myself. That's something that the priest had to do. Can you imagine that? Every time I entered the building, I like douse myself with Crisco or some other kind of olive oil. Uh, it sounds pretty horrible, actually. And I'm sure the police officers around my neighborhood, they wouldn't really like any of this. Uh, nevertheless, the specificity and the order is something that should stand out to us. You know, even if we're not able to follow along with every detail, the fact that there are so many details, that in itself is very important to us. Because through those details, it reveals to us the heart of God and what he desires, even for us today. You know, he may no longer require for us to follow these archaic commands, right? Uh, but he does desire for us to have that same obedient heart, uh, one that understands the importance of worship and one that is willing to follow all of his commands. You know, these rituals will mean nothing, even for the priests, unless the priests believe that that is what God desired for them. It's not the actions that purify them. It's not just the obedience that purifies them, but through all of that, that God sees it and purifies them. You know, the outer action is meant to be a, a expression of the obedience and the faith that's already present inside of them. And that is what God is looking at. You know, all of these different offerings are presented today. Uh, we have what we call a sin offering from a, a bull. We have another burnt offering for a ram. And we have another ram for what we call a wave offering. You know, all of these offerings were meant for consecration, uh, to make them holy, to be set apart, to be used for God's special purpose. You know, he wants us to be like that as well, to be holy to be used for his purpose. And even though you know, we don't have rams or bulls or sprinkling of blood, you know, we don't need to slaughter animals. Please do not slaughter animals in your house or at the church. Uh, but that desire for God, from God, for us to be pure, that remains true even for us today. For us to repent of our sins, to live holy lives, to live out our calling and to fulfill his mission in our lives. You know, there's a reason why the Apostle Paul tells us that we've got to offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. And this is meant to be our spiritual act of worship. You know, I pray that everyone here today, as we read today's passage and study and meditate on these instructions, that we're not reading it as some kind of you know, historic book, right? Or some sociology text on how the ancients lived many thousands of years ago. Uh, but instead, as we read it, that it points us to the heart of God. 
and what he desires for us even today as worshipers. That our actions, everything that we do, are expressions of the faith and love that we have for him. And that we are continually, even today, as his people, seeking his word, seeking him, and obeying everything that he has for us. In the Old Testament, consecration and sanctification were always linked to the system of sacrifice that they had. You know, to be consecrated and to have your sins atoned, animals always had to be slaughtered. Blood had to be shed over and over and over again so that the priests and the people could stand in the presence of God. And as we look on this system and these words of sacrifice, they should remind us of someone else. They should always point us to the love and mercy and the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And remember that because of the blood shed on that day many thousand years ago on Calvary, that because of that blood, that our sins are atoned for, that we are purified, that we are consecrated. And because of that, there is nothing that could come in between us and the Father here today. Let us all pray together. Heavenly Father God, we thank you uh, for giving us your word today and reminding us the importance of living out holy lives, that you have a very special purpose for every one of us. So we pray today that not only do we obey these commands, not only do we possess the spirit and this heart of worship, that every day, that we are seeking you, that we are seeking your word, that we are seeking to obey you, and we are able to offer all of ourselves as living sacrifices. Lord, we thank you and we love you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>